we are rejoicing because you have done us well. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, oh Lord, we come again to say thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Faithful God, we thank you. Jesus, I give you praise. Thank you, Asian of Days. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. As you have praised God today, get ready for another lifting tomorrow. Yeah. Only those that praise Him will He be committed to raise. I bet you, you have registered for another raising. God will not just lift you, he will lift your family. He will lift your career. He will lift your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the devourer has been devouring, restoration is flowing back. Restoration is answering for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Put your hands together for the Lord and please take your seats. Praise God. Choir, choir you have thrice more today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of us have not been to Niger Delta? You pass road. You just pass the road. Hallelujah. My prayer for you is that the blessing of God will be taking you around. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. <laughs> I tell you the truth, you need to be in Niger Delta service we are going to be focusing on passion for knowledge and the third service passion for prayer every man's passion defines his limits for life your passion defines your limits you are not limited in any area of life and destiny until your passion limits you. And you are the only one that can limit your passion. Your ticket for living is defined by passion. A 65-year-old woman in Covenant University graduation, collected a master's degree. And you wait here, you say you don't tire. 65 year old. Passion is stronger than feeling. Feeling can fade, but passion can never fade. Feelings can fade because circumstances have changed. But you can't secure passion and not be on the go. Passion puts you on the go for life. David said, O oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longed for thee. Tested for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Passion is that inner drives that keep you going when nobody wants to go with you. 
it keeps you going. It's a, it's a driving force. You alone know what is driving you. Hear me? Your success in life is measured by your passion. Your progress in life is measured by your passion. Your lifting in life is measured by your passion. So where your passion fades, everything begins to fade. Losing passion is losing momentum. You were on the move before, all of a sudden you are now slowing down like a snail. The reason is that you have lost passion. If there is anything that must not be lost for things to work, passion is there. You must not lose passion. The day passion dies, dreams begin to die. Nothing sustains the fulfillment of our dreams like our passion. Should I shock you? Nobody can believe your dream like you. So even if they say they are not going ahead with you again, you alone know what you saw. So that thing keeps you going. Nothing is impossible for a passionate man. A man that has passion, nothing can stop him. A man that has passion, nothing can slow him down. A man that has passion, nothing can quench him. More specifically, our passion for knowledge is our edge in life. If you have an edge over your neighbor, over the person sitting beside you, there is something you know he does not know. And if there is something you know he does not know, there is a place you can go he cannot dare. He can't dare it because he doesn't know it. If you are daring things others can't dare now it's because you have known something others don't know. That's why you must be passionate for knowledge. The people that do know they are God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. How old is part of 70 what? The man is still doing exploits. He's still doing exploits. It's not old age matter. It's passion defined. The people that do know their God. One thing that makes your passion for knowledge secure is learning. Proverbs 1 verse 5 a wise man will hear an increase in learning. Passionate people for knowledge, they are addicted learners. A wise man will hear an increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise cancer. Always learning. The day you stop learning, you start dying. What killed you? Your passion is dead. The day your passion for learning dies, you begin to die. Your business begin to die. Your career begin to die. Yesterday we were going back. We were listening to one of the recent album by Frank Edward. And uh, Martin Ebasi. All of a sudden, we just ask, What happened to this man? There's a particular person. What happened to him? He released only one album. We, we can't hear his voice again.
People that have passion for knowledge, money don't catch their attention. Because where they are going, there is enough money ahead. Should I tell you something? Where you are going, there is too much money. I say there is too much money in your future. There are too much cars in your future. There is too much food in your future. Don't kill yourself with the little things you are seeing now. What you are seeing now is too small to bury your glorious destiny. I remember one young man who was in the choir when I was in Asaba. He was the one that sang the song. Thank God, God no be man, oh, for if man be God, oh, I fall down die. Because of the way this guy was zealous, I had to force my boss, let's buy this uh, PSRO keyboard, the latest model. We bought, we bought the other one. So, all his mixing was done from the keyboard before he now went to the studio. Immediately, this guy tasted money. He started drinking. He stopped coming to choir. Before you know what's happening, that's how he faded away out of life. That album was the last and the best. He didn't see another one. Do you know what killed him? He lost passion. Paul said that I may know him. <laughs> Whatever you know now is in limits. For we know him parts. And we understand in parts that I may know him. There is no end to knowing. You keep learning and you keep knowing. You keep learning and you keep knowing that I may know him. Surround your life and your destiny with people that are passionate to know. By so doing, you will be eager to know. Don't surround yourself with non-entities. People that have arrived where they are going. If not, you will die quick. That I may know him. Knowledge is a driving force. PFN organized a meeting in Warri in 2006. And they invited Papa. And I remember when Pari or Richard Jaffa came on stage, he said, this young man came on board and all of a sudden we could see his back again talking about Papa. But today he's here, I'm sure he's going to reveal to us his secrets. He came just yesterday and he's, the church is there all over, everywhere. And Papa climbed the stage and he said, I, I am where I am today by reason of knowledge. Hear me and hear me well. Your edge in life is knowledge. Keep knowing. Keep pressing to know. He said, by reason of what I am knowing, I am securing impartation for my destination. You don't just know for head knowledge. Knowledge impacts. And knowledge drives. Knowledge impacts. And knowledge drives. What we call impossible is summed up in the word ignorance. Anything you call impossible is because you are ignorant in that area. So the devil will take advantage of you, molest you, attack you, because you are ignorant in that area. The moment you begin to know, the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth you know shall set you free. There are different levels of freedom. So knowledge opened the doors of possibilities. 
what you know creates more opportunities for you for life. Because whatever your eyes can see is no longer impossible. Whatever your eyes can see, for your eye to see it, knowledge must have been revealed. So you must seek to know more. Don't be satisfied with what you know. Never, never you be satisfied with what you know. I learned that every 22 minutes there is a new discovery. Globally, every 22 minutes there is a new discovery. New discovery. Every 22 minutes, something new has landed on planet Earth. So people are just discovering. In Nigeria, I don't know whether it's from Cross River or from Akwaibo, he schooled in one university in Japan. There was a mathematical problem that has not been solved for the past 54 years. That before that young man graduated, he dissolved that problem. And because of that, the university said, you are not going anywhere, you will stay here with us. He was given automatic employment for solving a mathematical problem that nobody has been able to solve for the past 54 years. The more you know, the more answers you have. <laughs> you can't have answers in life when you don't know things that will give the answer. That young man, even me too, if he says he wants to come back, I'll tell him not to come back before they will use witchcraft and collect him. You agree with me? They'll just use one witchcraft and send him to hell. So the best thing remains there. Whatever they need here, you can send it through um, DHL. You can do uh, Western Union transfer. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, it should remain there. Just last week, I learned of one other Nigerian, Ogun Lesi. How many of us watched that video about Ogun Lesi? That video is still getting me drunk. A Nigerian that bought over. Uh, uh, is it is it uh, Galwick Airport in London? Thank you. He bought that airport for seven hundred and eighty-six million pounds and sold it for two billion pounds. It's not an Igbo man. It's a Nigerian. He graduated from philosophy. From philosophy, he moved over to um, political science. From political science, he moved over to accounting. He now bought over another airport in Canada. The man's head is too correct. When your head is correct, everything will be working well. You hear me well? When you are growing in knowledge, you are sorted after. Nobody is looking for you because you don't know anything. It's true now. How can you be running after someone that doesn't have anything to offer to you? So you must be passionate for knowledge. Secular and spiritual. If Papa is not that intelligent, how can he sit down and begin to design the structure of a university? Where did he learn it from? No university. I learned the only thing he said that he studied the biography of nothing less than 30 different universities and began to redesign and reshape everything he wanted for Covenant University. Landmark. Very soon, King's University will land. Orient University will land. Crown University will land. Knowledge gives you an edge. 
Yes, they say all fingers are not equal. But knowledge can give you overtaking ticket. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes, knowledge defines your possibilities in life. But hear this now. In 1 Peter chapter 1, we are not reading. Scripture says, add to your faith knowledge. Add to your faith what? If you are not adding to your faith, your faith will remain in kindergarten. The knowledge you add to your faith is what determines the capacity for delivery. Add. No wonder Paul said, study to show thyself. A man that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you must study, you must be passionate for knowledge. You must keep knowing. You must keep knowing. You must keep knowing. No wonder Paul said, according to the knowledge of my mystery in Christ. The more you know, the more control you have. Knowledge puts you in control. Knowledge puts you in control. If there is anything that this um, people are trying to do is to, is to hide the truth. It's full and ease. They don't know the truth has already been discovered. They are in trouble. The truth has been discovered. How can a stranger come and claim ownership of a land? You came as a visitor. You're not saying that you get the land. Even where you are coming from, they are still treating you like a stranger. I read history when I was in secondary school, so I still know some things. At least I studied to a good extent the history of Africa. Some people don't even know where they are, where they are. You must know it too. Before someday, one, someone will come and tell you that uh, this is not your land. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. If you don't know, you are powerless. In fact, you are in trouble for not knowing. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not that knowledge is not available. Lack. Nothing increases the chance of your destruction like lack of knowledge. Every month, month, the books of the month will be announced. And yet, it never crossed the mind of some people to at least carry one and read. Never. 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 Your dominion status in life is defined by your passion for knowledge. Passion for knowledge. Passion for knowledge. I won't forget what David Biomi told me. If you stop where Papa stop, now you finish yourself. He said, if the, only the books you are reading is books written by Bishop Oedepo, you are dead. Go beyond where he stopped. Read other books so that you can know more things. Knowledge does not end with one man. Am I saying the truth? Knowledge does not end with one man. Whatever Papa knew now, he learned from Copeland or a robot, Kenneth Hagin, Oswald J. Smith. Am I saying the truth? Did he know them by himself? He learned from other people. So don't go and limit yourself only with the books that has been published go for 
more. He too is still reading. He still is still reading. He's still learning more. How many of us know between 2005, 2006, 2007, Papa was running a, a master's degree program on management in U.S. He will take off on Monday, come back on Friday. He will fly, go, fly, come back. Fly, go, fly, come back. No wonder he's a grandmaster. When it comes to managing things, managing accounts, leadership management, <laughs> you can't confuse him. Do you know what? The size of your dream will define your passion for knowledge. What is the size of your dream? That will determine the more things you will seek to know. If you have a local dream, you will have local passion. Say, oh, this book thing is too much. It's not in book. It's not in book. It's not in reading. Don't read. It's not in reading. It's not in reading. Don't read. When you raise your children, you tell them to don't read. That is not in reading. It's in farming. <laughs> Even farming too has gone high tech. Am I saying something to Sawa? There are local farmers, there are international farmers. The size of your dream will determine the passion you have for knowledge. How big is your dream will determine how passionate you will go. Don't say feel relaxed and be saying, ah. I've arrived where you are just starting. My friend called me some months back, my schoolmate. He said, I'm now an associate prof. I said, and then, is that the peak? Do you know what he was doing? Every month he published a minimum of four papers. To the point that the team was getting too much, and I said, ah, The way you are going, what's your target? <laughs> he said, He wants to be a prof. He's already an associate prof. Before September, he's a full scale prof. By next year, he wants to become Professor Emeritus. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Go for more. Go for more. Go for more. Go for more. Sisters, shall I shock you? A young girl made 4.99 in Covenant University. And she's already on scholarship in Pennsylvania University. 10,000 pounds. 4.99. Who do you? Who do you this thing? Who is that boy that is confusing you? Brothers, go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. There is no end to learning. There is no end to learning. When I saw the way Papa is going after knowledge, and I discover that if I limit myself, let me do myself. So I begin to, I begin to explore areas that is beyond pastoring. I'm telling you the truth. Because I have heard of some things that he's doing that is outside pastoring. I said, man, if I limit myself, I'm finished too. So let me go for more knowledge. Let me know some more things. If you stop knowing, you will start dying. If you need to learn another language, go and learn another language. Brian Tracy, Brian Tracy speaks more than 120 languages in the world. Brian Tracy, nothing less than 120 languages. Any country he wants to penetrate, he goes to study their language. Just ND, you are satisfied. Who do you? Eh? 
It's not enough. Now, some of you will tell me no money. It's a lie. Tell your neighbor it's a lie. Money is not the problem. You are the problem. If money is needed, start working and start saving. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There's a young man called Aruji Retano. You have heard of him? He didn't attend any university. He was insulted for not going to school, so he built one. And the one he built is the one he attended. Nobody can mess you up. They insulted him for not going to school. He said, me? So he vowed that he will go to school. And God blessed him with good money. Say with me, good money. So he built a university. And the university he built is the one he attended. How many of us know that Ora Robot was not a graduate before he built Ora Robot University? That was the testimony that provoked him. Tell your neighbor, go for more knowledge. As you increase in knowledge, your faith begins to command authorities, exercise dominion. The things that used to make you feel afraid, you will now become a terror to those things. As you grow your faith by reason of knowledge, new doors begin to open for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And lastly, let me summarize. Your passion for knowledge brings to an end your losses. Your passion for knowledge brings to an end your losses. If you have been suffering losses, it's because you are ignorant in that area. So Satan takes advantage of you and begins to make you suffer more losses. But as knowledge begins to increase, Losses come to an end. Amen. I say losses come to an end. Amen. It is coming to an end in your own life. Amen. No more loss. I say no more loss. Amen. I say no more loss. Amen. In your family, no more loss. Amen. In your career, no more loss. Amen. In your business, no more loss. Amen. In your destiny, no more loss. Amen. The era of losses, they are over. Amen. Knowledge puts you in charge. I am a man under authority. I say to one, go, and they go. And to another, come, and they come. When knowledge is imparted upon your faith, <laughs> you begin to command devils. They go after the ascender. When knowledge is at work, even the opportunities you have lost, you will collect them back. I say you will collect them back. I say you will collect them back. God cannot intervene for you different from what you have known. Scripture said that just shall live by his faith. David said the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. You can't have understanding without knowledge. It is knowledge that opens the door of understanding for you. When understanding comes, faith is imparted. And when faith is imparted, the hand of God must manifest. So the manifestation of God's hand over every area of your life is directly proportional to the knowledge you have secured. More knowledge, more manifestation. If you want to see more of the testimonies that faith will deliver, increase in knowledge. Increase in knowledge. Tell your neighbor, no more loss for you again. If you are saying that, say it's your assurance. Say it with full assurance. 
No more loss for you again. No more loss for you again. No more loss. 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 No more loss means affliction will not rise the second time. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Affliction will not rise again the second time. Affliction will not rise again the second time. Wherever the enemy has been attacking you, that same area God is giving you a testimony. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Affliction will not rise again the second time. It can't come the second time. I say it can't come the second time. I say it can't come the second time. For God to intervene for you, like I said, there is something you have known. And secondly, divine intervention is prophetic. It's prophetic. I won't forget one of our members when I was in Ahoda. His brother, a medical doctor, has planned to commit suicide that day. And by divine intervention, God told me, somebody is here your brother is about to commit suicide. And I like that sister. She was very sincere. She said, anytime time she's hearing me say all this prophecy thing, she said she never believed it. You see, I've never believed anything called prophecy. You see, because my mind tells me it's arranging. But now one is about to take place in her house. I say, the person's brother is about to commit suicide now. But God said we should pray and that arrow of suicide will be averted. We started praying. It was a Friday prayer. Immediately we finished praying, the following morning the young man called. Called her. Shade, I almost died. What happened? I wanted to kill myself. How? He said, I wanted to commit suicide. He said, ah! So you are the one pastor saw. <laughs> By divine intervention, suicide was averted. I don't know who the enemy is about to pick from you. But I pray for someone here. That cancer is aborted. <laughs> Rise up to your feet. We are going to pray for someone now. So I said, go and share your testimony. I told her, go and share your testimony. He said, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed not because I cannot stand on the altar, but the way I have perceived you is making me to be ashamed of myself. He said, I thought I know the Bible. You can know this Bible. You can't see what I see. Are you hearing me? You can't see what I see. Is Papa not a man of God? But he couldn't see when the enemy was planning an attack. Adeboye had to see that this is what the enemy was planning for his son. He drove by himself, came to the house, anointed and prayed for him. And that evil was averted. We are going to pray. He says, surely they shall gather, but not by me. Anyone that gather against me shall fall. Wherever they have planned another loss for me, oh Lord, disappoint their cancer. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lika topa, liya zozenaga, jekulete liya. Any program loss, any program losses that the enemy has designed for me, for my family, for my household, 
Lihute koli ale shata. Rendo keko braketeli abana. Let the council fail. Let their manipulation be disappointed. Ziko teke liya galadosha. Emprute negluta bra. Ila kreke toli enso dodo. Liharush ikorete liya da. In Jesus name we have prayed. Put your right hand on your head. Whoever collected your hair through dreams to waste you, I decree in the name of Jesus that arrow backfires. They use a witchcraft means to remove hair from your hair. That spot is empty now. I decree from today, your glory is recovered. That weakness sensation, I decree, let strength surge into you now. Any one of you here program for losses, that arrow fires now. Affliction will not rise the second time. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Whoever that person is, I decree for you. The person that collected your hair will die your debts. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Take your seat. Bring out your thanksgiving offering. 